we discuss on product ciphers data encryption standard construction that is des construction then fissel block cipher learning objectives are after attending this session you shall be able to explain product ciphers describe des construction describe fissel block cipher now we shall just uh, have a overview of the basics that we learned which helps us to understand secret key cryptography secret keys cryptography also known as symmetric key cryptography here the same key is used by the sender for encryption and the receiver for description key is shared between sender and receiver both should be knowing about the key and we have seen that general idea of symmetric key cryptography is involving the sender who wishes to send the plain text and this plain text has to be converted into cipher text for that purpose we are having encryption algorithm for the encryption algorithm key is one input and plain text is another input and by using these inputs and based on the uniqueness of the key which is shared between sender and receiver the plain text is being uh, encrypted and we get the cipher text as the output this cipher text moves on communication media and reaches the other end the receiver and receiver is having the common key that was shared by the sender using that common key as the input and cipher text also as another input decryption algorithm is being used and this decryption algorithm is resulting in the plain text back then we perform integrity check like this sender side message which is plain text sender side encryption cipher text receiver side decryption and receive side messenger and uh, this plain text encryption algorithm secret key cipher text and decryption algorithm these five ingredients play very important role and we should remember that in symmetric encryption scheme the key which is playing very important role and which is actually the basis for all our cryptography which is preferred over the encryption algorithm decryption algorithm and key is the only way of maintaining the secrecy of the message which is being the transmitted and received so to do that thing these are the five things we are having plain text encryption algorithm secret key cipher text decryption algorithm in order to ensure secret secret key cryptography we have to fulfill two requirements we do not need to keep the algorithm secret we need to keep only the key secret and sender and receiver must have obtained the copies of the secret key in a secure fashion so that unauthorized people should not know about this secret key if unauthorized people know about the secret key they can the decrypt the message which is being uh, communicated from the sender to receiver so maintaining secrecy of this key becomes very important if someone can discover the key and knows the algorithm all communications using this key is readable by the third party who may be unauthorized person so secret key prior ciphers we had the discussion on this substitution ciphers and transposition ciphers substitution ciphers are having mono alphabetic ciphers caesar cipher and poly alphabetic ciphers that is uh, winner cipher and the hill cipher 
and substitution ciphers are synthesized using substitution box which is referred commonly as s box transmission ciphers or permutation are synthesized using permutation box or p box in order to create the cipher text we require a beautiful and purposeful combination of this x box and p box so that the plain text shall be encrypted and converted into cipher text so that unauthorized people should not make any meaning out of it how we are going to combine this x box box and p box that is the point of discussion we are going in depth and the two types of secret key ciphers they play very crucial role the block cipher where we take a, a fixed size bits of data n bits data known as block these are usually 64 bits 128 bits or 256 however today for the discussion <clears throat> we are going to take 64 bits and how it is being used that is what we are going to check and these are the block ciphers are very crucial in a software related implementation and a software related uh, communication using protocols and other things stream ciphers an encryption algorithm encrypts one bit or byte of plain text at at a time it uses an infinite stream of pseudo random bits as the key security of stream cipher implementation make pseudo random data unpredictable and the key should never be reused so the stream ciphers are very much useful in hardware side of the implementation of the security two properties of block ciphers means since uh, we are focusing on uh, block ciphers so these two properties of block ciphers must be ensured when we want to go for the product use product ciphers so one is confusion no clue between the relationship between the cipher text and the key what is the connection between cipher text and the key the uh, the receiver will not be having any clue at all secrecy is being maintained here because of this it becomes nearly impossible to deduce the value of new and arbitrarily chosen key used to create cipher text diffusion here what happens is plain text and cipher text the relationship among these is being hidden how plain text is uh, related to cipher text that very secrecy the very relationship is uh, the secret it implies that each symbol in the cipher text is dependent on some or all symbols in the plain text so when we try to implement a secret key or symmetric key cryptography these two properties confusion and diffusion play very crucial role because in secret key encryption the overall the importance remains of conversion in the plain text to into cipher text and cipher text from that we have to recover the plain text at the sender side and uh, since uh, decryption and encryption algorithms are transparent and known to everybody not only sender and receiver the person who is unauthorized person also may be knowing on that the entire the secrecy is being maintained in the key so confusion plays very important role when key is actually the what is the relationship between cipher text and key he is actually masked with this background we shall enter into the understanding of product cipher for secret the block secret cipher the product ciphers for block secret cipher was introduced by shannon 
So he is the person behind the concept of the product cycle. It provides a template upon which most modern day secret ciphers are based. Means, the whatever you are talking about product cipher today, it is actually a template. And using this template, we have to come out with uh, different types of uh, designs. A product cipher is a complex cipher combine, combining substitution, transposition and other techniques. Because ultimately, when we are trying to convert the plain text, into cipher, we have to encrypt it, cipher text, we have to encrypt. If we have to do it, then we have to use the technique of uh, cy the cipher com combining substitution, transposition, transposition and other uh, techniques. The product ciphers shall enable the block ciphers to have two important properties diffusion or confusion otherwise what happens is if diffusion are not being implemented if by some chance if the external person or crypt analyst or the hacker catches hold of the key or catches hold of the relationship between uh, the key and the ciphertext and the plain text then he will be in a position to make the meaning he can convert the ciphertext into the plain text very easily and make the meaning out of it if we want to create problem to these hackers to maintain the secrecy of the message that is being communicated between sender and receiver, plain text to ciphertext, ciphertext to back to plain text, then the two important properties of diffusion or confusion we have to use appropriately in our entire design. Modern day secret key product ciphers are typically synthesized using substitution box and permutation box means when we want to create the ciphertext from the plain text which is being supplied in the form of 64 bit block we are interested in using substitution box which is referred to as s box and permutation box which is referred as a p box in a very nice manner for this purpose we have to depend upon data encryption standard how we are going to be using it we have to ensure that ds construction the 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 ds or data encryption standard is designed by researchers at IBM in early 1970s and adopted by the US government in 1977. This is the first encryption algorithm for the commercial and sensitive data. Lot of information is being maintained in the databases and a lot of information is being communicated and how we can maintain secrecy about it to do that purpose the encryption algorithm is being used data encryption standard is the first such algorithm that is being introduced it is used in financial services variety of embedded systems smart cards sim cards and network devices requiring encryption like modems set box set top boxes and routers we make use of data encryption standards over here in all these different types of applications 
Now we shall see DS features. Here we are considering the block size as fixed 64 bits. Means when the plain text is given to us, the plain text has been split into many 64 bit blocks. The first plain text box P1, second P2, P3, like that, we are going to combine. The P1 plus P2 up to Pn combined together, it is representing the plain text. So, as soon as we get the plain text, plain text which is in the form of a text must be converted into digital form, which is a combination of 0 and 1. And this message has been split into 64 bit blocks. We get many such blocks after splitting original plain text. Now, in this, this is the block size message. For encryption, two important aspects are required. One is the message, which is we are having as a P1 plus P2 plus P3, like that, combination of a many 64 bit blocks. And then we require the key. Both shall be supplied as input to encryption algorithm. So in DES, the key size is 56 bits. Please remember the block size of 64 bits and uh, is related to the plain text. There is another input, separate input, which is a key. If size of the key is 56 bits, actually 64 bits will be there, but 8 are used as parity check bits for error control. And uh, we know in uh, the communication networks, that is how we are going to create uh, the packets from the message and how we are going to add on the check bits for parity check bit and other things to that. So like this out of 64 bit key size 56 bit is representing the key and remaining 8 bits are being used for parity check so that we can have a good error control. And when we want to convert original plain text into the cipher text, we are making use of 16 intermediary keys and rounds. There will be total 16 rounds. For each of the round, we will be having uh, the input uh, plain text, which is a uh, undergoing transformation round two one two round two there will be some some transformation round two to round three another set transformation like that message is a, in a stepwise manner in the 60 rounds we are converting the plain text in the final encryption text in each of these rounds from earlier round we are getting input and also we are supplying another key to it. So, 16 inter intermediary keys and the message from earlier round are coming as input for each of the rounds. In brief, 64 bit plain text, one block, when it is being supplied, it is get getting converted into 64 bit ciphertext by making use of the key which is 56 bit plus 8 bits of parity check bits. So, like this block 1, then block 2, block 3, block 4 of the plain text are being uh, converted. Key 64 bit, uh, this one, this is what we can see here. We supply it, then a DS a cipher, 
64 cipher text. So to do that thing, we require the 64 bit key. This is happening at encryption side. And this 54 bit key is common. It is being shared between the sender and receiver. In symmetric cryptography, the key should be known to both of them. It should be shared. Since the receiver end, the person is knowing the key, the ciphertext is being supplied and uh, this 54 bit uh, key then from the last text which we are getting uh, after 16 round in the step by step from bottom up manner 16 round to 15 round 15 round to 16 uh, the 14 round like that in a bottom up manner we move and then we will get original plain text. Here, top down, round 1, round 2, round 3, up to round 16, we convert original plain text by splitting it into many blocks. For each block, using the key and intermediate keys in each of the, uh, the rounds, we convert the plain text into ciphertext. At the receiver side, we are making use of bottom up approach. From the ciphertext, we start reconstructing the plain text. So we move from what is the output of the last round to output of the, the 15th round, then the 14th round, like that. We move up and then we get the original message. That is happening at the decryption side. For that purpose, we are having a algorithm. If you look at it here in the picture, we have got a plain text and we have got the key. The key plays very important role and uh, it, the uniqueness of the key only are deciding the way in which plain text is encrypted. For different types of keys, different type of ciphertext we are going to get though plain text is same. So how we are going to do it? The original, the block that is from place, uh, the plain text we split, we pick up block 1 which is having 64 bits. And making use of initial permutation, this 64 bit has been split into two subgroups. One with a 32, another one with 32. So left side we are having 32, right side we are having total 32, which combined together is 64. Now after that, the we start converting into right one, where the left part is being uh, not touched at all. The encryption of the right part of the 32 bit that we are going to carry out. For that purpose, we are having algorithm. Then we have got a sub key. And this combination is performing S box substitution. And once substitution is being carried out, then we perform permutation. What is substitution and what is a permutation already we have seen. These are the two types of the ciphers. In the two types of ciphers, first we have to carry out substitution, then we have to go for permutation. Because of this, we are going to get the ciphertext out, which is again 32 bit. We combine it with this. And then this. 32 bit right side is becoming the left side in the next round. And the whatever we are getting as the output, the left side of it is becoming the right side here. Then we carry out similar process in the next one. 
that is a l n minus 2 r n minus 2 then we perform substitution and then permutation we will get the output in the output we have got 64 bits the first 12 bits are unchanged and uh, the 32 bit uh, new one is being changed has undergone change now in the next round that is in the third round right side of this 64 bit is becoming left part of the input and left side is becoming the right side of it means when we move from round to round what we do is in the first round we keep left fixed we uh, make the changes to the right 32 bit and in the next round what output we get we keep 32 as fixed the earlier left side of the message it undergoes change then in the next round what output we are getting as 64 bit out of that 32 right side will be becoming a left side input and left side is becoming the right side like that we move from one step to another step each of several possible ways of permutation are being carried out in which a number of things can be ordered or arranged means we, if we want to have more round of secrecy then this permutation become more and more complex overall objective is making use of the keys performing encryption by having a, <coughs> providing greater security now in data encryption standard security it is the old data encryption standard its key size already we have seen it is 56 bits and also ds uses 64 bit blocks which raises some potential issues when encryption encrypting several gigabits of data with the same key is being carried out but however they when in the earlier things when we are having a lot of problems related to cpu speed and also was from the database angle and when there were constraints related to the speed of the computer networks and other things we had to deal with uh, the size of the data but uh, in modern days because of uh, the evolution and revolution of uh, communication related aspects and database related aspects like big data and other things and uh, these things are not playing uh, a greater role means a size of uh, in the form of gigabyte and other things in modern days it's a very small entity now when we provide all these things so the brute force attack on des is being used to recover the information because we may be using either uh, the confusion or diffusion here because of that either the relationship between uh, the key and the plain text may not be clear or the relationship between plain text and uh, the final the cipher text may not be clear if any of these relations are uh, missing then what happens is there will be always a confusion or diffusion between the sender and receiver if receiver wants to recover then he has to use the brute force attack on des it involves search of the key space what is the possible key like that we have to search that is testing all possible keys in order to recover the text used to produce a cipher becomes very crucial 
the expected number of trials before the correct key is found is equal to half of the size of the key space so much search we have to do it for example if there are 264 possible keys a brute force attack would on an average be expected to find a key after 263 trials in the worst scenario so like that the different type of searches we have to do in the key space to get the first one it is as if uh, to open any almera we have got one box uh, in front of it uh, with uh, thousands of keys then how we are going to pick up the right key to open the almera we pick up one we try it if it doesn't work we pick up another one we try it if it doesn't work we go to the third one and try it like that we go on checking the similar type of thing is happening here if the key is not known then what happens is what are the possible combination of the key we should go on searching and searching and searching till we get in the worst scenario there can be in 264 possible keys then 263 trials may be taking place now with this we shall move towards the fissile block cipher in the fissile block cipher is not a specific scheme of a block cipher but is a design model please remember it's not a standard it is one of the models there can be many different models but this is a very popular one is a design model from which many different block ciphers are derived DES is just one example of a Fister cipher. A cryptographic system based on Fister cipher structures uses the same algorithm for both encryption and decryption. Only difference is in encryption top down, in decryption bottom up. We have to use the algorithm in a reverse manner. Already we have seen the DS block size of the text is 64 bits, key is either 56 or 128 bits. For our thing, we have taken 56. A single block of plain text is transferred into ciphertext after passing through the following steps an initial permutation, 16 rounds of a given function. A 32 bit left right swap, 64 bit input, we are, the, we are splitting into 32 bit left and right, already we discussed on that, and a final permutation. How it is taking place? Each of the 16 rounds are functionally identical. If we understand that what is happening in the first, then the, in the next block, what happens? In third, what happens? Like that, we can conceptualize or imagine let i minus 1 and r i minus 1 be the left and right side of the input to round i means from the earlier round what we are getting they are becoming the input to the next round so l i 1 means and l r i 1 i 1 32 bit and 32 bit output of earlier round is becoming input to the next round. So, since we are considering round i, l i minus 1, r i minus 1, which are obtained from earlier round, are coming as input here. l i equal to r minus 1 means we keep left side fixed. Whatever has been supplied, to as the right side of earlier round becomes L, the input li here, left part of 32 bits. And uh, what was uh, the left side of the output of earlier round is becoming the right side here, then we are carrying out the XOR function, function of 
R J minus one and K J. This is what we are going to carry out. The function f is applied at each round and referred to as the round function. Each round uses a round key, which is one of the inputs to function f. Each round key is derived from the DS key. Some formula we have to use, and using it, we have to derive from the DS key. The encryption process using the Fester structure consists of multiple rounds of processing of each plain text. Each round consisting of substitution step followed by a permutation step. We had seen in earlier diagram. So, original message from earlier uh, uh, round output is split right side which left side of uh, the message which is uh, being supplied as input to the current round left side of earlier output becomes right side of it so left part we do not change it right part is undergoing change first we perform substitution then after that we perform permutation for that purpose key is being used the round key is being used there which has been derived from ds key then the transformation takes place after carrying out the first substitution then permutation then we will get the output output again is a 64 bit and we split this 64 bit into 32 bit 32 bit then left side 32 bit is becoming right side and uh, right side 32 bit of output is becoming left side of the input to the next round like that we carry out 16 rounds this is the schematic diagram how the activity is being carried out now the plain text has been supplied so there is a bigger message now we are taking one block from that plain text so it has got uh, two halves one is l and r 32 bit and 32 bit so that is being supplied here then right side for this we are supplying uh, performing uh, fun, uh, the uh, applying the function which is combination of key and right side message and how this particular function is getting carried out this is the way it is getting carried out means left part remains the same but right part is undergoing change by considering a round key as the input and by making use of substitution following that permutation these are the activities we carry out then we will get the output output is actually 32 bit of the right part that underwent change and left part which has not undergone any change now in the next round the right part of it is becoming left side and left part of it is becoming right side so that it can undergo change. like that round one round two round three like that up to 16 rounds of activities we carry out here so left right Because it's very crucial of the 64 bit combinations. Finally, we get the cipher. We are getting. After 18 rounds, house noted as left half L and right half R. In each round, R goes through unchanged, but L goes through 
expression that depends on r and the encryption key function this function is a combination of substitution first after that permutation then xor the output of the fkr function with l is obtained the d in ds implementation of the fistel each round of the whole m a round it that is the uniqueness of the digital encryption the algorithm the permutation step at the end of each round swap the modified l and unmodified r is actually the output l of the current once the last round is completed then the two sub blocks r and l are concatenated in this order to form ciphertext block now we shall see how the decryption process is going to take place in the decryption process involves uh, l i minus 1 and r i minus 1 we are moving uh, the bottom up here there what will be in the the round number 15 from round number 15 to round number 14 like that to carry out that we use a bottom up approach and is summarized by the following equations r i minus 1 equal to l i r i minus 1 l i minus 1 equal to r i plus the function of l i and k i note that decryption 2 involves computing the function not the inverse of a function the implication of this fact is that the function f does not even have to be inevitable the structure of such a cipher is attributed to horse type fistel one of the key designers of des a cipher that has such a structure is referred to as a fistel cipher the process of decryption in a fistel cipher is almost similar and not exactly same instead of starting with block of plain text the ciphertext block is fed into the start of the fistel structure and then the process thereafter is exactly the same as described in the given illustration means only the uh, output of the encryption is being used as input for decryption and everything is the same so with this we come to the end of the session in today's session we have discussed about a secret key or symmetric uh, the key cryptic cryptology and we have discussed about uh, confusion and diffusion and uh, we discuss about uh, the block structure and its use and we discuss on des then finally fistel decryption encryption process and decryption process so that is the overall scope of today's discussion with this we come to the end of the session